Hi, I'm Lily. Today I'm going to show you how I made these treats from scratch for my last stop motion animation. If you haven't seen the short film, I'm going to put a link above and in the description below. I'm going to show you how I made the whole set from scratch and step by step. It's divided into two sections to be more flexible for the shooting. Enjoy the video! First, I've cut some 12mm plywood and some studs with the jigsaw. Then I place the plywood piece onto the studs, drill into it to connect the two, use a countersink drill bit to make sure the screw will sit flush and then screw it together. I repeat the same thing for the second part of my sets, drill and screw together. Then I took another piece of 12 mm plywood and cut the second level of my streets. I place it on top of my base, glue the pieces together and add a few screws to make sure it's not going anywhere. So now you can see the different components. You've got the back of the street, the front of the street, and as you can see, I've cut a piece out because actually I'm going to have a house that is removable that becomes the living room. It makes more sense if I show you when I actually shoot the scene, how I've moved the components around. Now, because of the design I've chosen for the streets, every house has a different angle. So I had to cut a piece of plywood to fit the design of every houses. I've glued the pieces together with a strong wood glue and sometimes use a nail gun, but because the piece was so thin, we're talking nine millimeter plywood or 12 millimeter plywood, it was a bit dangerous sometimes. So I end up using some tape just to hold together while the glue sets. Otherwise you can add some brackets inside of the house. Then I apply some wood filler on the side and sand it down when it was completely dry. Now I wanted to add some trim around the door opening and window opening, so I've cut some strips of balsa wood and add them with a hot glue gun. Now you can see it makes quite a difference from the before and after with those trim added. Now for the render on those houses, I've mixed some PVA and some sand. It took quite a few tests and experiments to get the mixture right. And this is how it looks when it's fully dry. Then I realized I forgot to add some window seals, so I just cut some piece of buzzer wood, sand it down and hot glue in place. I've also added some timber on the top for the fascia to be able to hold the roof. Then I place my houses onto my sets, mark the outline on the plywood with a pen first and then a permanent marker to make sure that the line is clearly visible. Then I start working on the pavement and especially the curb. I've used some craft foam, two millimeter thick and marked up a line every one centimeter. Then I've cut some long strip of that craft foam and use a hot glue gun to attach it to the pavement. Then I use a wood burner to separate each stones of the curb and add some texture. Make sure you use some gloves, mask and work in a well ventilated area. I've primed the plywood with a PVA mixed with a bit of water and once it was fully dry I've applied some grout. The reason why I choose grout is just because I had plenty left over from an old tiling job. So it's free for me and it's got a nice grainy texture to it. So I think it was a nice fit. I mix it up with water and apply all over. If you're wondering what kind of tool I'm using, it's a Japanese plastering trowel, I think. I love it because it's really thin and flexible. Then I knew I wanted to add texture to it, otherwise it's a bit flat and boring. So I start playing around with sanding paper, try to see what kind of mark they will leave. I play it back and forth between the trowel between the sanding paper just to get an interesting texture on that street. For the sidewalks I wanted something a bit more rough in terms of texture and it was really just playing around with material until I have something that looks quite interesting. I've also used some dry sponge to just add even more texture and cracks into the sidewalks and on the streets. Once it was completely dry I've sanded down a little bit and decided I want to add more cracks so I use a screwdriver to add more dents into the streets. Then I realized I forgot the drainage system so I've used a chisel to dig a uh, near the curb. Then I thought about the manhole cover that needs to be nearby and I removed the grout that was in that area. Then I use a vacuum cleaner to remove all the dust and prime it with a black gesso. Then I start painting it and add lots of different colors and shade with a sponge. 
I've also made sure I had some contrast between the streets area and the pathway on each side. Once I was happy with it, I sealed with a clear sealer and then I started to do some dirty wash. I've applied some diluted dark brown, removed the excess with a wet paper towel. I've used a dark grey into the crack of the road, remove it as well with wet paper towel, dry brush the whole thing and also dry brush the curb so you have all the texture showing up. This material I use all the time on my project is Warbler, it's a thermoplastic and it exists in different kinds. The classic, the smoother version which is black and the clear version. I'm going to use all three kinds on this tutorial. So I'm going to start with the black version that I've used for the manhole cover and the drain. I've got a round disc of Wobla, heat out with a heat gun, and then I press it onto a jar lid just to add some detail. You can also press aluminium foil or just anything to create a texture or a dent into the Wobla. I've also cut a little drain in the same material. Then I stick the drain onto the road with super glue and use the hot glue gun for the manhole cover. In order to blend them in, I had to do a dirty wash with the brown diluted paint and remove the excess with a wet paper towel. To mark the line on the street, I've cut a piece of paper, cut out some rectangle in the middle of it and use a stipple brush with a bit of white paint. When I was happy with the whole thing, I used a clean matte varnish to protect the paint. Then I went back to my houses. First, I primed them with a white gesso, then I've painted them, and also used a sponge to apply a different shade just to make it a bit more interesting and less flat. I've also highlighted the texture with some dry brush. Then I have to age the house to make them more realistic. Then I've started with some black diluted paint, then I remove very quickly with a wet paper towel. Then I've added another layer of brown and also added some paint all around the door frame, the door windows, where all the dirt can potentially accumulate. And you can see it makes quite a difference before and after once you age a little bit and distress the houses. It makes them more realistic. I've applied a coat of clear matte varnish to protect the paint. Then I start working on the external window shutter because it's a regular feature in Switzerland uh, on most houses. I needed 10 pair of those so I didn't want to make every single one of them by hand. I thought I'm gonna make a mold and then cast some resin. So I start cutting some basil wood take out the internal part of my rectangles, cut them into small little pieces, and then I glue them back in. I've added quite a lot of hot glue because I wanted to make sure that the shutter will stay attached to the cardboard. Then I start to build up some walls with some cardboard and the hot glue gun. This is how it looked before I poured the silicone. Then I mixed up my silicone, a bit more than 100 gram of it, pour it into the mold, let it dry overnight. And then the next day I took the mold out. It was a bit rougher than what I thought, but you know what, with a bit of cleaning up, it looks just fine. Then I used some fast cast resin. That's the one I use all the time by PS Composites. Mix it together, pour it into the mold, and after 20 minutes or so, you can take it out of the mold. It's still quite flexible at that time, so make sure you put it on a flat surface to let it dry and set completely. Then I sand it down and clean up each pieces. I've installed them on a piece of cardboard with some blue tack to make sure they stay in place and they are slightly raised at the cardboard, so I can prime them and paint them. Then I made some doors with balsa wood. I didn't want to make a mold for them. I wanted to make different design for the doors. So I've made them one by one. Use a hot glue gun to hold everything in place and then paint them and age them. 
For the roof structure, first I needed to create a base, so I've cut two triangles and two rectangles and assembled them with a hot glue gun. Each of the house was at an angle, so slightly different roof. It creates a main base that I can use for all the houses. Once I have this one in place and a hot glue on top of my house, then I can start build up the roof. Then I've added the main triangle at the front of the house. Then I can place another piece of cardboard onto the roof, outline the shape of it. and cut it with a Stanley knife. And this is how it looks when it's all assembled with the hot glue gun. I knew I was about to make some mess, so I've covered the house with some plastic sheets and some tape, and then I use a flexible modeling paste, Liquid X, to create the texture of the roof. First, I apply a thick coat all around, and then to create the texture, I use a sculpting tool and press it all along my roof. I'm quite happy with how it looks and it ended up being quicker than what I thought. I've let that dry for at least 24 hours and in the meantime I start to work on the roof ridges. I do some chopsticks, draw some ridges every 2 cm and then use a little dremel to carve those lines into the wood. Then I use some warbler and cut some thin strips of it warm it up with a heat gun and then start to shape my ridges on my templates. So I've pressed the warbler to take the curved shape first and then use the sculpting tools to make sure that each line on the ridges was marked. Once the warbler has cooled down, I can easily take it out of the chopstick. I think it looks quite nice. I made lots of those and primed them. Once the modeling paste was completely dry, I used the hot glue gun to attach them on top of the roof. And then cover the whole thing with some white gesso to prime it. Then I painted all the roofs and start working on the gutter. For that I used some black warbler and cut some thin strip out of it. I've used a heat gun to warm it up and then press it against a plastic tube so it can take the shape. To create the fascia brackets to be able to hold the cutter, I've used one of the cutter I just shaped, cover it with aluminium foil, press it near a wooden block and add some tape to hold it in place. I use the aluminium foil, otherwise the warbler I was about to shape will stick to the cutter straight away. Then I cut some really thin strip of warbler, hold them with a plier. I've tried to make them two by two. Then I've hit them with the heat gun and press them into the shape that I've just created. Once it was completely cold, I can take them out, cut the excess that I reuse for the next brackets, and there you go. I've probably made 50 of those. Then I start cutting my gutter into the right size for each house, use a hot glue gun to hold them in place. Add my little brackets to it. Those little details make such a difference. Then I've also hot glued the shutters and I apply some clear matte varnish to the roof to protect the paint. For the window, I've used some white craft foam, cut some thin strip out of it, cut them into the right shape, cut a rectangle out, use some super glue to glue them to a piece of plastic from packaging. Once the glue was completely set, I can cut them out adjust them to make sure it fits nicely, put them into the window opening and add some tape to hold it in place. I've also add a piece of white paper at the back of it because the plastic of the windows are see-through so otherwise you will see inside of those little houses and they don't look pretty because they haven't been done so just to cover that up I've added the paper. Then I've added the doors also with a bit of tape to hold in place. I've created some tiny door handles with some FIMO that I've cooked, paint and added with super glue. Don't forget to add some locks to your doors. You can also add some door number. All those little details really add up to tell your story. Even the little hook that holds the shutter in place, that makes a difference. 
Now I'm going to talk about the tree. I wanted to create a tree out of FIMO and the tallest I can fit in my oven. So first I have to measure the oven. I can get the highest tree in there if I cook it horizontally. That means I needed to create a base that can hold it while I sculpt and then flip horizontally to cook. For that I use a piece of oak. Don't use some plywood because it's got glue in it and if you cook it it might release some fumes. So any timber that is not treated, proper timber will do. So I took my piece of oak, make a hole in the middle and add some little screws around it. You will see later why. Then I took a bunch of wire. The one I have the most was steel wire which is quite tough on your hand. If you have aluminium it's a bit softer and pass them through the hole in the middle of it. Then I took the wire and attached them around the screws. That will create some stability for the tree when I sculpt it, but also later on to attach it. Then I start shaping the wire, shaping the branches, place it on my set to make sure the branches will not stretch too far and it's got the right shape. Then I cover everything with a brown fimal and start sculpting my tree. Add detail, take your time. I've also decided to create a base for it with some little paving and add lots of texture to it. That is important and I will help for the painting later on. This is how it looked before I put it in the oven. So now in order to place it in the oven, I needed to add a button on the side. Once again, any timber will do as long as it's not treated. Screw it firmly against the base. Then I needed to create a little support for the top of the tree. So I drill a hole into the timber and pass some wire through and shape it to make sure that it will hold the tree gently. Then as you can see, I can flip it on the side and the tree is not going anywhere. I placed the whole tree into the oven and it was a very, very tight fit. I was relieved when it was in there. Then I've applied different colors of acrylic paint with a sponge, apply diluted brown paint to make a dirty wash and remove the excess with a wet paper towel, do some dry brushing for texture. Then I used the hot glue gun and some lichen or moss to add some foliage. It was a bit challenging at first, the hot glue just get everywhere, but I'm quite happy with how it turned up in the end. And if you have different colors, it's really nice. It helped with the overall realism of the tree. Then I've marked on my set where the base of the tree should sit and remove the grout in this area. I drilled a big hole in the center of my square and I've added some screws underneath. So you might understand very soon what's gonna happen with that because once I pass those wire through the hole and I hot glue the base onto the board, I can go underneath and use those wire to tidy it up even more. I know I have overdone it. I didn't need as many screws as this one, but I can guarantee my tree hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't moved the slightest. I've done some touch up with some acrylic paint and place my houses back on the set. For the street light, I use some piece of timber and hot glue them together. Then I've cut some strip of warbler, heat them up with a heat gun and start to shape all around the post. The great thing with warbler, not only will it take any shape you want, but it will stick to itself. You can literally wrap it around and you don't need to add some glue. You just press it and it will glue to itself. Add another piece of warbler at the top. I didn't need to have some LED through because for me it was a daylight scene. So I just need to create the illusion of glass. I've used the hot glue gun on a piece of baking paper to make different shapes. Then once I had two nice ovals, I've glued them onto the warbler. Then I drill into my set, add a bit of hot glue, press the post into it. To add some details, you can dry brush with some silver paint to add a metallic effect. I wanted to create some lamb that I can put in front of every houses of different shapes. And I've used some warbler. They can literally shape around any object. So I can even use an eraser, hit the warbler, stretch it on top of it. And when it's cooled down, I can trim the excess. I've done the same thing with some mark pens. I 
Then you need to close the back of it, so I've used the baking paper, add a bit of hot glue and press my shape onto it. Once it was cold, I can just trim the edges and then add a bit of 3D paint onto it and let it dry overnight. You can do lots of different shapes. For example, this one, I've used this pen and for the black lights, I've used the marker pen. Then add as many details as you can, so a bell push, door knockers, it's easy to create with some FIMO. Cook it, paint it, and use some super glue or the hot glue gun to hold them in place. Now for the walls, I've used some 9mm plywood and apply some white gesso to prime them. Apply two coats of white acrylic paint and then use a sponge to add different shades of light blue and purple to create the clouds. On that wall in particular, I wanted to have a brick wall. So for that, I used some 5mm EVA foam. I've marked a line every one centimeter and use a wood burner to carve out all the lines, first horizontally and then vertically. And then I create a bit of texture and dent into it to make it more realistic. This is how it looks before priming. Then I use some white gesso, some acrylic paint, add a lot of different shades, do some dry brush for the texture and then use the hot glue gun to glue it against the plywood. Then I've placed my back wall into the set and attach it with some screws and washers. I've done the same thing with some side panels. At that point I start attaching all the houses in place with some tiny brackets. That way it's much more flexible so when I'm shooting I can just remove specific houses, two or three or whatever, if suddenly they're in the way or I want to place the camera in that position so it's much more flexible for shooting. Then I've added some texture with some lichen and moss. It's brilliant just to add some little details here and there. You can hide lots of defaults with that, so that's very useful. And then why not create some window planters with some basil wood and some super glue. Just add a lick of paint, create some brackets with some black warbler. Then fill it up with a hot glue gun, add some lichen, some artificial flowers and then place them onto the building. If you want to make sure that your flowers are regularly watered, why not creating a tiny little watering cans? I made this one with the plastic bottle of a soya sauce, uh, some flat wire and a piece of straw, I think. And this is how it looks. Isn't that cute? If you're considering making your own street set from scratch, I think there are three main elements to think about which country, which era, and which mood. This set, for example, was uh, inspired by Switzerland, where I grew up. It will be very different if I decide to make a street about UK, where I live for the last 12 years. You will have some exposed bricks, some bay windows. So I think it's crucial to make some research before designing a set and designing the country, the era, but also the mood, because it will influence how you tell the story. Is it gonna be dark, distressed, age, or is it gonna be uplifting, colorful. For me, I wanted the idea of tradition and repetition because that's how I wanted to tell my story. So I think it's important for you to think about what is the story you want to tell, how you want to tell it, and once you make those decisions, that will influence the whole design of your set. You're free to create your whole universe from scratch, why not? I mean, nothing is stopping you there. But take the time to think carefully about the story, in order to create the appropriate design for it. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Next time I'm gonna to show you some behind the scenes of my last stop motion animation. Take care.